Hello everyone, today on Good Morning Maine, two men are now awaiting sentencing on murder charges after being found guilty. Plus, people who have certain misdemeanor marijuana convictions may soon be able to apply to get their criminal records sealed. And after over 60 years of live performances, one Maine country music band is retiring from the limelight. We'll hear their story as well. Good morning, everyone. I'm Craig Colson. Emma Smith is off today. We thank you for joining us on this Monday morning. We'll have those stories along with a lot more coming up, including um, a story about how people celebrated St. Patrick's Day all around the state yesterday. Folks were having a lot of fun and we'll show you how. But first, to check out that forecast, and it looks like we're kicking off the work week under cloudy skies, partly cloudy anyway. We won't have a totally cloudy day, but there is a chance for a few sprinkles. Here's Devin Biggs with all the latest. All righty, Craig, thank you very much. Happy Monday, your first weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's shortest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All right, let's get into things this morning. A small crowd advisory is up until later this evening at around 8 p.m. because of active surf that will be expected along the coast. We have a little bit of energy passing through. That's allowing the wave heights to increase this morning. Meanwhile, though, a few returns on the radar, maybe even a few light rain showers in a few spots last night and early this morning. Now we're seeing a few flurries across parts of the northern parts of the state. Now, most of us will stay quiet today until later this afternoon. We'll have some clouds moving in. Then a few rain drops will be possible before we're all finished up there. Meanwhile, though, zooming things out, a little bit of shower and snow shower actually developing right now across parts of the northeast. So we're going to be noticing that throughout the daytime period today. Hence the reason why we'll notice a few sprinkles or light rain showers today. Future cast showing that developing some clouds moving in a few sprinkles possible later into the afternoon period. A little bit of snow further off towards the north that will back off later on tonight to just some cloud cover. As for the winds, though, we'll still notice some gusty winds reaching up to around 10 to 15 miles per hour sustained and gusty winds even up to 25 miles per hour before we're all finished up there. Meanwhile, though, your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period showing increasing clouds. A few sprinkles possible during the afternoon. Temperatures warming into the 40s. Your full five day forecast is coming up. Craig? All right, thank you, Devin. We'll see you later on. A man from Portland is facing a list of charges following a wild police chase on St. Patrick's Day. Authorities say it was around 2:17 Sunday when an officer spotted a woman waving frantically for help from the passenger side window of a vehicle on Forest Avenue. They say 34 year old Benjamin Martineau was driving the vehicle and he refused to stop. He led police on a 20 minute chase through the city and on to Interstate 295. They say he finally pulled over near mile marker 12 and was arrested at gunpoint. Martineau is now charged with criminal restraint, eluding an officer and several other charges. Two men are awaiting sentencing on murder charges. That comes after a verdict was reached in the trial of two men accused of murdering 17-year-old Brandon Guerrero of Machias. After hours of deliberations on Friday, the jury found 30-year-old Emmanuel Ramos and 21-year-old Juan Ortiz each guilty of one count of murder and one count of robbery. Authorities say they were among the people who planned to rob Brandon Guerrero of drugs and money. The teenager later found shot to death in Machias following that confrontation. Three other men charged in the case previously pleaded guilty to the same charges and testified against the defendants during their trial. The investigating the October 25th mass shooting has released its interim report ahead of its April 1st deadline. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard, who has been following the story since the shooting, has a deeper look at what that report contains. Having read through the 29-page report, the key takeaway from the commission is that Robert Carr Jr. was responsible for his own conduct during the shooting. However, there were several opportunities law enforcement had that, if taken, may have changed the course of events. This interim report is the work of seven public hearings, over a terabyte of electronic reports and records, site tours of the shooting locations, and the public and private testimony from witnesses, victims, and family members of CARD. Commission Chair Daniel Wathen laid out the charge of the commission to get to the bottom of the events before, during, and after the shooting at the first meeting. It's a task that each of us owe to the people of Maine, and particularly to those victims and those affected directly by this horrific and unprecedented tragedy. In the report, the commission lays out the timeline of events beginning in May of 2023 and reached several interim conclusions in the report regarding Maine's yellow flag law. 
One unanimous conclusion is that, quote, the Sagadahawk County Sheriff's Office had more than sufficient information to begin the process of securing a yellow flag order on Robert Carr Jr. on September 17, 2023, end quote. Something that Sergeant Aaron Schofield disputed when he testified before the commission on January 25th. If he was in mental decline, as stated to me at that point, then potentially take him into protective custody. But that's the key element. We needed, we needed to do that assessment. The report went on to say that Sergeant Schofield or the Sagadahawk County Sheriff's Office should have followed up with Card at his workplace after their initial attempts to do a welfare check on Card at his home were unsuccessful. The commission acknowledged the yellow flag law as cumbersome, but possible if officers are knowledgeable of the process and resources available. The work isn't done for the commission. They plan to hold several more public hearings before releasing their final report with recommendations by May 1st. In Augusta, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. In other news this morning, an Abbott man was safely located deep in the woods after going missing on Saturday night. According to the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, 71-year-old Howard Weymouth left his property for a walk at around 3.30 Saturday afternoon, but he didn't return. Weymouth reportedly has Alzheimer's and his family contacted the warden service for help. Wardens began searching for Weymouth around 730 Saturday night and say a game warden and his canine companion located him at around 930 p.m. That's when he was safely returned to his family. Well, people who have certain misdemeanor marijuana convictions may soon be able to apply to get their criminal records sealed. A suite of legislation proposed by the Criminal Records Review Committee would seek to change the eligibility to have criminal records sealed or marked confidential. It would include Class D and E crimes for possession and cultivation of marijuana that occurred prior to January 30th, 2017, when Maine's first adult use cannabis bill went into effect. Speaker of the House Rachel Talbot Ross, who chaired the committee, says this legislation is the culmination of months-long deliberations. Now that cannabis is legal and profitable in this state, how do we reckon with the injustice perpetuated by its illegal uh, activity? Dating back to the 1970s with the proliferation of the war on drugs policies in the United States, millions of Americans were subjected to overly harsh and extreme sentencing policies that caused an overwhelming increase in our prison population, criminalization, and lifelong criminal records, disrupting or altogether eliminating their access to adequate resources and supports to live healthy lives. Other members of the Criminal Records Review Committee that support the bill says it's a good first step, but more needs to be done, including expanding the eligibility to include offenses for harder drugs like heroin. Well, innovative thinkers and problem solvers came together to strengthen their skills at a Skowhegan summit. Our Callie Warren was also there. Members of the Skowhegan community joined together to strengthen their teamwork skills at Saturday's Natural Resources and Tech Start Summit. The event is hosted by community organization Main Street Skowhegan in partnership with Northeastern University's Rue Institute in Portland. Organizers say the event aims to inspire entrepreneurship and encourage teamwork. One of the beautiful things about the Start Summit program that we run is we put teams together that might not know each other beforehand. When you get other great minds in the room who think differently and have different life experience, that diversity of thought, you actually can get so much further. Teams were encouraged to creatively solve problems related to natural resources and use those solutions for business opportunities. We are excited to bring people together to start thinking about um, how we sustainably utilize our natural resources as a product or service, as a business opportunity. So the whole goal of this is to just foster and cultivate innovative thinking and get more people excited about potentially starting or growing a business. Participants say the event's focus on local small businesses empowers entrepreneurs and community members alike. Being able to come together and put ideas that we necessarily would have not thought about unless we were here. It was good to see other people's perspective. So we'll get to know how the, these local businesses work in Maine and we'll come up with a new technological idea. In Skowhegan, Callie Warren, ABC7 and Fox 22 News.
All right, the time now is 810. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, hundreds of people decked out in green celebrated St. Patrick's Day around the state. From parades to tipping back a few pints, we'll join the celebration. But first, another check of the forecast. Today, we can expect partly cloudy skies with a chance of sprinkles. The highs will be around 47 degrees. Partly cloudy overnight with lows dropping down to the upper 20s. Tomorrow, another partly cloudy day on the way for your Tuesday. It will also be breezy with highs near 44. Behind every keepsake, there's a memory. Behind every photo, there's a story. Behind Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration, there's people giving back by bringing back what was thought to be lost. The details, the time, and the expertise, all packaged up behind a name that Mainers have trusted for over 35 years. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, depend on the knowledge and experience of Hammond Lumber Company. Hammond's Home Planning Center will turn your ideas into accurate conceptual drawings and 3D visualization is available. Your Hammond sales rep will prepare a materials list and cost estimate. And when you buy all of your materials from them, Hammond will refund all of your design fees. Hammond can deliver your order from any of their 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner since 1953. Lewis Black, Goodbye Yeller Brick Road, the final tour. When I was in elementary school, then I was like nine, and the teacher said in case of a nuclear attack, get under your desk. <laughs> and I said, why would I do that? And she said, because you'll burn faster. Lewis Black, live on stage. Collins Center for the Arts, March 24th. Get tickets now at waterfrontconcerts.com. She's the apple of his eye. Ta-da! What do you think? You look beautiful. And you're grounded. She may be a tomboy. You're so lucky you get to be in junior G.I. Joe's. And you're lucky I don't want to get blood on my uniform. But she's still daddy's little girl. So now no one talked to you for me. This isn't a sex talk, is it? Because I already know more than I'd like to. Learn all about Eve. Oh. Am I supposed oh. to understand what you mean by that? Mm -hmm. On Last Man Standing, weekdays at 3 on Fox 22. Outdoor sporting enthusiasts piled into the University of Maine Fieldhouse over the weekend for the return of the annual Eastern Maine Sportsman Show. The event is organized each year by the Penobscot County Conservation Association to highlight outdoor recreation opportunities here in the state. This is their biggest fundraiser of the year, and all the proceeds go towards scholarships for students at the Hudson University and University of Maine who are studying forestry, law enforcement, and wildlife-related programs. According to the organizers, they are the longest continuously running all volunteer outdoor show in the entire country. I think people spend far too much time inside and our organization is really dedicated to enjoying outdoors and getting especially our young people involved in the outdoors. It's a great crowd today. Uh, it was a good crowd yesterday as well, so uh, it's really nice to see people coming out and supporting and looking to get out into the, into the field. So. Featured a variety of demonstrations, raffles, and over 100 vendors and exhibitors from around the state. For those who missed the event, they plan to return again next year for the 84th Sportsman Show. More information about the Conservation Association can be found on their website at pccamaine.org. Vocational students from around the state put their skills to the test during the annual Skills USA competition that was held Friday in Bangor. The tradesmen and women of tomorrow showcase their abilities in vocational specific time trials ranging from automotive electrical repair to wedding cake decorating. The tests are the perfect opportunity for the students to show off what they've learned and to see where they can improve. This is like tourney week for them, so this is a big deal. Um, but there's also with Skills USA, they do a lot with leadership, um, teaching kids speaking skills, um, how to prepare themselves for the workplace. There's a lot to it. The students who rise to the top and win gold will head to Atlanta, Georgia, for the National Skills USA competition, which will be held in June. Good luck to them. Well, Bangor locals join many around the country in celebrating their Irish heritage on Sunday by piling into their favorite pubs. Pub owners say it was a great boost for local business. 
Our Grace Blanchard has more. Jewish Day, yeah, yeah, the Holy Day we like to call it. St. Patrick's Day is one of the busiest days of the year for Bangor area pubs. It, it's so, certainly super busy. It's a lot of fun. Um, we see a lot of our friends come in today, a lot of family. It's a family day, really, for us. For many locals, throwing on their best green attire and coming to the Gagans Irish Pub for food, drinks, and music is a tradition they look forward to each year. Just have a good time with friends. Be, uh, be together and have a good time. I like the camaraderie that the community gets to participate with in each other and just get out and let loose, forget the cares of the world for a moment. You know? Several area bars have been gearing up for eager customers. We're not your traditional Irish place. However, with the sports and with our specials and with the spacing that we have, works out great for a lot of people. The owner of Gagan says the celebration of Irish heritage certainly brings the community together. It's, it's a, a gathering of the community and uh, in a public place, and, and you know, just everybody's here for the same reason: have fun uh, and, and uh, enjoy that with their community. In Bangor, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Meanwhile, hundreds of people all decked out in green got outside to celebrate the St. Patty's Day Parade in Portland. People came from all over the state for that. Asia Reed shows us why this is a tradition for some families, even if it means traveling hundreds of miles. Irish flags held high in a sea of green. Marching through the streets of Portland for Sunday's St. Patrick's Day Parade. This event is a tradition for some, like friends Presley and Lucy, who are here with family. I just chose green because Irish and I don't want to get pinched. Hundreds of folks line these streets, making way for the bagpipes and drums. The pipes and drums. Absolutely. Carol and Stan Tickton traveled more than 600 miles all the way from Virginia, and they sure love Maine. For our winter vacation, coming to Portland as well as North Conway, New Hampshire. There's some Irish folks here Sunday. Born in Brooklyn, New York, second generation Irish American, a dual citizenship. And of course, Slugger the Sea Dog, too, putting on his best show. Sweet treats were a hot commodity at this celebration. I also brought this so I could catch candy. Dozens of Irish dancers made their way through town, hyping up the crowd. This parade ended loud and with no pots of gold in sight. And that was Asia Reed reporting. Hopefully everybody had a wonderful St. Patrick's Day celebration. The time now is 818. Coming up after the break, the Down East Country Band has been delighting Maine audiences for more than 60 years. But those live performances are now coming to an end. We'll hear about their retirement plans along with the rest of the day's news as Good Morning Maine continues. There are some things that work better together. Like your workplace benefits and retirement savings. Presentation looks great. Thanks. Thanks. Voya provides tools that help you make the right investment and benefit choices so you can reach today's financial goals. That one. And look forward to a more confident future. That is one dynamic duo. Voya. Well planned, well invested, well protected. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Yeah. Sick. Sick. Whoa. Oh, yeah. You could get the lowest financing rate ever on most 2024 Tundra hybrid and gas models. Just 1.99% financing, which could save you up to $3,900. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. The Legacy Sandwich, where you can find quality, homemade sandwiches that are made to order. When it comes to food, we take it seriously. That's why we serve shredded chicken and turkey on our sandwiches, and our bacon is cooked fresh daily. To pair with your sandwich, we also have a selection of homemade soups, macaroni salad, and baked goods for dessert. The Legacy Sandwich, voted Bangor's best deli sandwich shop for the past 12 years running. It's not just a sandwich, it's a legacy. Give us a call today. Cutting corners, going rogue, it's a problem. 
Critics are loving the new season of Alert MPU. Braun's gonna be watching us. You're like my babysitter? I'm your partner. Huh. Unless you're gonna act like a baby. And Tuesday. We have a missing woman pregnant. Baby's in trouble. It's a ransom note. They want $100,000. Approach with caution. She's about to deliver a baby who won't survive. <laughs> Alert MPU. All new Tuesday at 9, 8 central on Fox. <laughs> After over 60 years of live performances, one main country music band is retiring from the limelight. We had a chance to speak with them about their legacy and their love for each other. <laughs> and you're the key what? Evie. Husband and wife duo Clyde and Elizabeth Flaherty have shared over six decades of love and music. They've performed across the state since the late 50s as the band Down East Country. But now, they're hanging up their guitars and reflecting on a lifetime of music in Maine. It's been a happy, very happy career for both of us. They've played with over 180 different bandmates, including their son Ray. But they say the one constant throughout their careers has been each other. When I first started dating her, I taught her how to play. We started in the little clubs and then it developed uh, into a larger thing. The couple has played their songs at American Legion halls and nursing homes throughout Aroostook County, aiming to help those in need. My main goal in life is to be around people that needed help and to try to bring up their life by cheering them up with a song. And they were featured on Dick Stacy's Country Jamboree, a late night music program that aired here on WVII. Stacy Jamboree, that was fun. Must have been 1958. We used to love to hear the, uh, the other entertainers. But they say one of their fondest memories is the night they brought the house down. One night we was playing at a hall in Limestone, Maine. The whole entire ceiling came down on top of the people that were on the dance floor. So they cleaned it up. And the music went on and we played to one o'clock. <laughs> and although they may be retiring from live performance, they say they'll still make music together. I yeah. love you. Yeah, yeah. We wouldn't change a thing. We'd do it over again. And heartbeat. In Sullivan, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. How sweet. We wish them the best of luck to in their retirement. In other news, this morning, the Brookfield Zoo in Chicago has opened an attraction that gives guests a bird's eye view of not only the animals there, but also the city's famed skyline. The 110-foot Ferris wheel will, will be open through the end of the year in honor of the park's 90th anniversary. It features 24 gondolas and seats up to six people in each car. The ride lasts between seven and eight minutes, but will give you a great view of the surrounding area. Very nice. All right, the time now is 823. Time for another check of that weather forecast. Good morning, Devin. All righty, Craig, thank you very much. Happy Monday, a full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. Already a small cat advisory remains in effect today, expiring at 8 p.m. this evening, though, because of active surf that's being expected along the coast. So if you live near these areas, though, don't be surprised if you notice some active surf in those spots. Meanwhile, though, here's the wave heights right now at around 3 to 5 feet according to the buoys here. This is why a small kite advisory is in effect at this time with AgriSurf being expected for their off roads east at this point as well. Meanwhile though we had a few raindrops last night and early this morning even near the Bangor area that's tracked off to the north and east now. Seeing a few snow returns right now across the northern parts of the state and it's not just that spot seeing some of that snow as well. A good part of the northeast is seeing some, some snow shower action developing with an area low pressure that continues to track off towards the east. We'll start to see this taper off for us coming up later on tonight as well. Futurecast moving forward, though, showing that little bit of snow across the northern parts of the state throughout the morning period. We'll also have increasing clouds as well with a few sprinkles possible during the afternoon period, maybe a few flurries farther off towards the north where it will be a little bit cooler. But as we head towards uh, late tonight and parts of Tuesday, the precipitation taper is off. We hold on to the clouds, though. And as we head towards the Tuesday, thinking a partly cloudy sky. But going dry, though, as we do move forward in time about the way until late Wednesday, though, for our next opportunity 
for a little bit of precipitation to move in, which will fall in the form of rain and snow, tracking up from the west, going toward the east. Some rainfall on the coast where it might be just a little bit warmer there. Further off towards the north, some snowfall will be possible there as well. We'll track this through through parts of Thursday afternoon as well with a little bit of snow and wind. The once we push this through by Friday, we're looking pretty good as it tracks off towards the north and east, so we'll keep an eye on that system. But meanwhile, though, moving forward for today, here's what we're looking at here. Upper 40s, partly cloudy, some afternoon sprinkles possible, and that west wind gusting up to about 25 miles per hour at times. Later on tonight, we have upper 20s, the precipitation tapers off. We'll be under a partly cloudy sky with that west wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, here we go, middle 40s, partly cloudy and breezy. Northwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Already a Scott's Recreation extended forecast. So a few rain and snow chances for the day on Wednesday with highs in the low 40s. Upper 30s on Thursday with a chance for snow showers and mostly sunny on Friday. Highs in the upper 30s. This spring is the perfect time to get away with a great deal on your favorite Hyundai model. All backed by America's best warranty, plus three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. Add more joy to your journey at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Get in and get away now before these deals are gone. Lease an all-wheel drive Palisade SEL for only $349 a month. Or step up and get a limited with $1,500 bonus cash. See your Bangor Hyundai dealer. This or that. This or that. You can do this. Do you and you that. You can do this. Do you and you that. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Get started today at Angie.com. Family owned and operating in the Bangor area for more than 10 years. Crosby's Welding is here to help you. We specialize in steel, stainless steel, and aluminum welding and fabrication. We serve many of the local industries from Maine lobstermen to the commercial trucking industry and everything in between. Fully mobile on-site construction services right down to custom signs and fire pits. Fast, friendly, reliable service. Give us a call today for a free estimate, 974-7815. When Crockett's Excavation and Auto Repair want to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Crockett's Excavation, located in Ellsworth, does it all. Whether you're looking to clear a lot, put in a driveway or road, or establish proper drainage, Crockett's Excavation has you covered. Live, Monday, April 1st. Celebrate today's hottest music. Thank you, iHeart. It's the iHeart Radio Music Awards with epic performances by your favorite artists. Justin Timberlake, Green Day, TLC, Jelly Roll, Lainey Wilson, Tate McRae, and more. Plus, a special musical tribute to icon recipient, Cher. Come up here and get your iHeart Radio Music Award. The 2024 iHeart Radio Music Awards, Monday, April 1st, live on Fox. back to Good Morning Maine. Violence in the nation's capital. Investigators looking for the person responsible for a series of shootings overnight. It comes as the city has been launching a new initiative to crack down on violent crime. Fox News correspondent Madeline Rivera has the latest. DC police are still looking for the suspect or suspects who they say shot seven people early Sunday morning. A total of seven people were shot at this location, uh, two of which have sin since been pronounced deceased. Uh, the other individuals that were shot at this location, all of which are adults, were transported to local hospitals. Authorities have not released the identities of the victims or the conditions of the five survivors. They also haven't said what led up to the shooting. But the area where this took place is a popular spot, home to some of D.C.'s biggest restaurants. Police are looking at surveillance video in the area, and they're asking witnesses to come forward. The shooting comes just days after D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser signed a massive bill into law to tackle the crime crisis in the city. It's called Secure D.C., and some of the key parts of that legislation include strengthening gun penalties, cracking down on organized theft, and creating drug-free zones. Locals have been pleading with public officials to find solutions. Last year was particularly violent in the nation's capital. Homicides rose by 35 percent, while overall violent crime increased by 39 percent. Bowser says there's a bit of an improvement this year. Homicides are down about 30 percent, and violent crime has dropped about 10 percent in the first two and a half months. And she believes Secure DC will keep things moving in the right direction. The things that we do to make the city safer will by and large have the most beneficial impact on people who are living in, in, in lower income neighborhoods. Congress still needs to sign off on Secure DC, but some of the key parts of the legislation are already in effect. 
In Washington, Mather Avera, Fox News. Meanwhile, deadly violence erupted last night following a weekend of celebrations along the Florida coast. People ran for their lives in Jacksonville Beach after someone opened fire during a St. Patrick's Day celebration. Three people were shot and one person was killed. The entire area was placed into lockdown as police attempted to find the people responsible. The shooting came as several Florida communities have imposed new crackdowns on spring breakers, including in Miami where a midnight curfew was in place over the weekend. Former President Trump's campaign team working to clarify his use of the word bloodbath when describing what would happen if he was not elected. Trump's team says he was only talking about the auto industry. Democrats say he was threatening political violence. To put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those cars if I get elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. This is not the first time the former president has used dark language in his rallies. And now some Republicans on Capitol Hill are asking if this is pushing voters away. Also in that speech in Ohio, Trump asked the crowd to stand and pay tribute to those who attacked the Capitol back on January 6th. Trump has promised if he wins to free the people who were convicted for that attack. Well, as we said, it is the height of spring break season down in Florida with thousands descending on the sandy beaches for a little R&R. &R. The place to be this year appears to be Fort Lauderdale after, as we told you, Miami Beach put in place new rules intended to keep things from getting too wild. Fox News correspondent Madison, Madison Scarpino has more on how spring break is going. We're definitely seeing some large crowds of people here, especially college students filling up the beaches, bars and restaurants. But some spring breakers we spoke to say there's been no trouble yet and all fun. I've never even been on spring break. It's my last year, so I was not expecting all the people, but it's, yeah, it's packed. So we got here at 10 and it was kind of quiet, but all of a sudden it's literally insane. Like people are packed on top of each other, but it's still like comfy. It's not like, you know, like sardines. As the day goes on, the party gets bigger. Crowds of people from all over the country hanging out on the beach and enjoying their last day or so of spring break before heading back to school. And the Fort Lauderdale Police Department says everything has been under control so far and no major incidents. That wasn't the case during spring break last year, about 30 miles away in Miami Beach. Police arrested over 500 people and two people were shot and killed. Last year's violence is why the city is shutting down business before midnight this weekend. Business owners pushed back, saying they're losing a lot of money from this. Three nightclubs took it to the courts, but a judge ruled the curfew will stay in place. Here's what the mayor said. We were risking ruining our reputation uh, by having these, these acts of violence, which we've prevented this year. So this is a win-win for everyone, and this is actually a huge success for us this year. The party's likely not over here in Fort Lauderdale. The mayor says that they're expecting next weekend to be just as busy. In Fort Lauderdale, Madison Scarpino, Fox News. And coming up on the second half of the newscast, a community is trying to reunite a man with his beloved pet alligator. We'll have that story and we'll tell you about a special tea that will be held in Bangor as Good Morning Maine continues. My father worked at the mill for over 30 years. He was exposed to a great community and excelled at his job, but he was also exposed to asbestos. The air quality inside the mill was always his biggest complaint. He had no idea how deadly some of the products and materials were. When he was diagnosed with mesothelioma, we knew to call Joe Bornstein's office to get my dad the help he needs and the justice he deserves. Call Joe today for a free case evaluation. There's never a fee unless you win. At Hood, our love for New England inspired New England Creamery. We make it with premium Hood milk and cream, then we overload it with the good stuff. Like Green Mountain Mint Chip with a rich, fudgy swirl. Main Sweet Blueberry with real, delicious blueberries. And Cape Cod Fudge Shop, packed with fudgy truffles. Hood's New England Creamery, from Hood, for New England. Try all 10 flavors. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor.
Welcome back, everyone. Today is Monday, March 18th, 2024. Just one day to go until the official arrival of spring. I know a lot of people can't wait. It's also National Sloppy Joe Day, which is the perfect thing to eat on a day like today. For some history now, back in 1870, the Lake Merritt Wild Duck Refuge in Oakland, California, became the first U.S. wildlife sanctuary in the entire country. It was created to help the migrating birds as they made their way north and south and continues to operate to this day. In 1925, the most violent tornado in U.S. history struck Missouri, Indiana, and Illinois, killing 689 people. In 1931, Schick Incorporated displayed the first ever electric shaver. In 1942, President Roosevelt signed an executive order authorizing the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II. In 1963, the Supreme Court ruled that the state courts were required to provide legal counsel to criminal defendants who couldn't afford an, an attorney of their own. In 1965, a Russian cosmonaut became the first human to walk in space and in 1974, most of the Arab oil producing nations ended a five month old embargo against the U.S. It had been sparked by American support uh, for Israel during the Yom Kippur War. And finally, back in 1990, $500 million worth of art was stolen from the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston. They took the art, left the frames. The case remains unsolved to this day and a $10 million reward is still offered for information that leads to, to the return of that artwork. There were 13 pieces in all, and they're still out there someone, somewhere, probably in someone's private collection somewhere. All right, for birthdays today, we, they include pop star Adam Levine, who turns 45, actress Lily Collins is 35 today, and TV personality and king of dirty jobs Mike Rowe is 62. Lily Collins, a wonderful young actress and also the daughter of Phil Collins, who uh, gave us all a lot of wonderful music over the years. All right, let's check in back with Devin now for a final look at that forecast, or another look at the forecast anyway. Good morning, Devin. All righty, Craig, thank you very much. Happy Monday, your first weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's shortest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations on Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All right, let's get into things this morning. A small crowd advisory is up until later this evening at around 8 p.m. because of active surf that will be expected along the coast. We have a little bit of energy passing through that's allowing the wave heights to increase this morning. Meanwhile, though, a few returns on the radar, maybe even a few light rain showers in a few spots last night and early this morning. Now we're seeing a few flurries across parts of the northern parts of the state. Now, most of us will stay quiet today until later this afternoon. We'll have some clouds moving in. Then a few rain drops will be possible before we're all finished up there. Meanwhile, though, zooming things out, a little bit of shower and snow shower actually developing right now across parts of the northeast. So we're going to be noticing that throughout the daytime period today. Hence the reason why we'll notice a few sprinkles or light rain showers today. Future cast showing that developing some clouds moving in a few Sprinkles possible later into the afternoon period. A little bit of snow further off towards the north that will back off later on tonight to just some cloud cover. As for the winds, though, we'll still notice some gusty winds reaching up to around 10 to 15 miles per hour sustained, and gusty winds even up to 25 miles per hour before we're all finished up there. Meanwhile, though, your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period showing increasing clouds. A few sprinkles possible during the afternoon. Temperatures warming into the 40s. Your full five day forecast is coming up. Craig? All right, thank you very much, Devin. We'll see you later on. A Western New York community is now rallying around a local neighbor, trying him, trying to help him recover his pet alligator. Tony Caballero says officials took Albert, an 11-foot, 800-pound gator, from his home on Wednesday. Albert had been a pet since 1990, but his permit expired in 2021. There were also concerns because Caballero allowed people in the water with him, a big old gator, too. Cavallaro insists there is no danger involved. I'm Albert's dad. That's all there is to it. He's my, he's like family to everybody. He was two months old when I got him. He was captive born. He don't know nothing but people his whole life. Well, an online petition asking for Albert to be returned now has more than 100,000 signatures. Good luck to him as he tries to be reunited with his pet alligator. Still to come this morning, all the day sports news, and we'll also hear about a special tea being held in Bangor to benefit literacy volunteers of Bangor. Don't go away.
Crockett's Excavation and Auto Repair, located in Ellsworth, does it all. Whether you're looking to clear a lot, put in a driveway or road, or establish proper drainage, Crockett's Excavation has you covered. Crockett's Excavation takes pride in the fact that our work stands the test of time. Reach out today for a free estimate. Don't get cold feet this winter. Stay warm and dry with high-performance footwear from Comfort Shoes and more. With an extensive selection of winter boots rated from 0 to minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit, you'll find comfort in knowing your feet will be warm in any weather. Discover the latest in functional and fashionable footwear with grippers built right into the sole. With boots in stock up to 6E and size 17 for men and women. Take the drive to Newport for a sit and fit to find your perfect fit. You and your feet will be glad you did. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Hmm. Imagine all the slopes you'll conquer. Sick. Imagine all the sights you'll see. Wow. Whoa. Okay, how about you imagine dropping me off? <laughs> right now, you could get low 4.75% financing for 60 months on an adventure-seeking all-wheel drive Ram 4 hybrid or gas model, which could save you up to $2,000. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. 25 words or less. What advice do you have for John? Have fun. This is one of the best games on TV. In a friendly game of words. 11 words. Oh, you just came to slay. Oh, <laughs> the key to victory. Stifler's mom. Oh. Jennifer no. Coolidge? Cougar. Cougar, oh yeah. He's clearly in the clues. Wave, light, pebbles. Rebel! You did it. You did it. Weekdays at 9 on Fox 22. Crockett's Excavation and Auto Repair, located in Ellsworth, does it all. Whether you're looking to clear a lot, put in a driveway or road, or establish proper drainage, Crockett's Excavation has you covered. Crockett's Excavation takes pride in the fact that our work stands the test of time. Reach out today for a free estimate. Sign up for You Pick 'em Red Sox at foxbangor.com. Pick who you think is going to win and compete against other fans for prizes. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. It's a big weekend in Orono on Friday night, Maine women's basketball. Punched their ticket to the NCAA tournament Saturday. It was Maine hockey's turn. Let's get to it and go to the Alphon. Black Bears hosting New Hampshire on Saturday night in the Hockey East quarterfinal. Second year in a row, Maine gets a home playoff game. This time, they're one win away from a trip to TD Garden. Black Bears looking for their first trip to the Hockey East semis since 2012. Longtime rival New Hampshire standing in the way. First period, Wildcats with a great chance. Morgan Winters fires. Alvin Boya makes a save and then stops their second chance. 0-0 after the first. To the second we go, Bradley Nadeau taking it up. Backhand pass to Josh. He fires and he scores. The brothers connect. Maine strikes first. They lead 1-0. Still in the second here, Lyndon Breen has it. He's going to get it to Josh Nadeau. His shot no good, but the fifth-year forward, Ben Poisson, gets the rebound and scores two to nothing. Black Bears still in the second here. Josh Nadeau with it. He is going to find Bradley, and Bradley this time gets his first goal of the game. Maine would take a three to nothing lead into the third period. Wildcats trying to make a push here, but once again, the freshman Boya making the save in net and shutting them down. The main offense would not stop. On the power play, David Brazil to Bradley. His one-timer scores, puts Maine up four to nothing. Josh would add another to make it five. The Black Bears are heading to TD Garden. They play BU next Friday at 7.30. Well, the guys played well. They deserve that tonight. Um... You know, it's a, it's a good way for us to, to finish our home season. And, you know, obviously we're not done. You know, we you know we get a chance to go to the Garden and, do, and play a game down there. We haven't played there in a long time, and we're going to be playing an unbelievable team and uh, try to create another really good memory down there. I mean, Josh and Brad are, you know, they're game changers when they, when they make plays like that. And, uh, you know, obviously we fed off. Once we got one, the crowd, I mean, this, this place is electric. I've, I've never seen a building as special as this. All right, staying in Orono, it was a special weekend up there. It all started Friday night with Maine women's basketball, like we said, punching their ticket to the NCAA tournament with a huge 64-48 win over the University of Vermont. It was a special day for fifth-year senior Ann Simon, too, and Anna Kahalen as well. When Simon came to Maine as a freshman, all of the upperclassmen had been to the NCAA tournament. She helped lead the Black Bears to four America East Championship game berths and finally got to cut down the nets last night twice she's been named player of the year and defensive player of the year for america east she was awarded the america east tournament mvp last night your friday night just a perfect way to cap
cap off a wonderful career with me. I, I couldn't have asked for a better fifth year. I mean, this is the reason I came back, and just being able to do this with um, these people, with Anna too. I mean, I've said it this year. I was like, maybe it just wasn't right for us to do it without you. Um, so I'm just really happy that um, that we both can do it together and, and just have this amazing last year. For the Black Bears, it is their second trip to the dance in the past six seasons, and they've been to seven of the last eight America East Championship games. No one player on the roster has been to the dance, though, but that's not to say Maine has really fallen off. They're consistently one of the best America East teams, and Amy Vashon quick to dish out the credit to everyone around her for her program's sustained success. I mean, it's the people. You know, it's the players that you bring in who buy into your philosophy and your culture. And I say it a lot, it's not easy to play here. And it's not your skill set. We demand a lot from these young women um, in the classroom, in the community. Um, we demand a real lot. When you have that culture and then that work ethic, and then we have amazing staff, it's great support. Um, you know, you just, you just try and keep it going and they will try and keep it going. We will head back to the ice now and down to the garden where the Bruins were hosting the Philadelphia Flyers on Saturday looking for their second straight win. Second period, Flyers up 2-1. to one. Bruins power play off the faceoff. Brad Marchand finds Charlie Coyle in front for a goal. That ties the game at 2. To the third period we go. Same score, David Pasternak gets it to Coyle who skates in and look at this. He roofs it for the goal. That puts the Bruins up three to two with just about 18 minutes left to play. Minutes later, Johnny Beecher in front. He hits the post here and then he is going to follow his shot like it's basketball. Scores on the rebound. Bruins up four to two. All right, just 19 seconds later, the bees were not done yet. Jake DeBrus controls it in front. He's going to make a move here and he scores, making it five to two bees. But the Flyers would not go away. Five to three here now. It's going to be Morgan Frost. He is going to get the puck in front, and he's going to go between the legs. Tucks it by Jeremy Swayman for the goal. Nice move right there. Two minutes later, look at this sequence. The Bruins block the shot, and then Danton Heinen skates in. He's going to fire a wrister. Gets that to go for the goal. The Bruins, they make a sweat, but they pull out the 6-5 to five victory at Philly. All right, and that is all of the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. RSV can severely affect the lungs and lower airways. But I'm protected with Orexv. Orexv is a vaccine used to prevent lower respiratory disease from RSV in people 60 years and older. RSV can be serious for those over 60, including those with asthma, diabetes, COPD, and certain other conditions. But I'm protected. Orexv is proven to be over 82% effective in preventing lower respiratory disease from RSV and over 94% effective in those with these health conditions. Arexby does not protect everyone and is not for those with severe allergic reactions to its ingredients. Those with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. The most common side effects are injection site pain, fatigue, muscle pain, headache, and joint pain. I chose Arexby. RSV? Make it Arexby. I'm at Bob's with our trending Montana dining set. And I'm live with the Ortegas, checking out a similar looking set they bought at a national retailer. It's got the same farmhouse style with storage drawers. But the Montana collection comes with your choice of four chairs and a storage bench, or six chairs, two finishes, and dining or counter height for just $9.99 every day. Theirs costs more, and they charge you for options like that. Good one, Dad. When it looks you love, go for less. There's only one thing to say. Oh, my Bob! Bob's Discount Furniture. Long before pharmacies or drugstores set up shop in main cities and towns, residents had their prescriptions filled at an apothecary. It's the awe factor when you, when you step in and see the immensity of the collection. We'll step back in time to visit the Lavertier Apothecary in Waterville. Tonight on Fox 22 News at 10. I can make anything disappear. Critics love The Cleaning Lady, and Tuesday is all new. I might have something for you to clean. The Cleaning Lady, all new Tuesday on Fox.
Welcome back, everyone. Well, we're very happy to have a very special guest here today to tell us about a, a very fun event coming up. We have Mary. She is the executive director of Literacy Volunteers of Bangor. I've known you for a lot of years. It's nice to see you here on Good Morning, Maine. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Craig. Thanks Thank, for having yeah, me. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Um, you do a lot of good work here in the community, helping people uh, achieve their literacy goals. Mm. But you can't do it without volunteers, without some money to keep things going. So you have a fun event planned. We do. So uh, this is our 10th anniversary of the Literacy Tea. It's the Marvin and Sherry Glazier Literacy Tea, and it happens on Sunday, April 7th in the afternoon. And it's a celebration, really, for reading for all ages. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely family-friendly, and we're hosting a, a Maine-based author who's so incredibly talented. I'm so pleased to be able to introduce, uh, not necessarily to the community because she's well-known, but her name is Jennifer. Uh, Richard Jacobs, Jacobson, excuse me, and uh, she's presenting her book, and it's a picture book called Oh Chickadee, which of course is an yeah, to our Bird, right? exactly, yeah. exactly. So she has a wonderful presentation planned, and it's it's a performance of her book. Um, but Jennifer's written tons of books, and mm -hmm. a lot of them are nationally acclaimed. And for maybe older uh, older children, they may have uh, heard about uh, As Small as an Elephant, mm -hmm. which was one of her real famous books. So she'll be there, too, among all this. She will be there, yeah. too, yes. And this will be at John Bapps High School where they're having it? Yes, exactly. Yeah, and this is kind of a neat thing. Uh, people used to have teas all the time back in the day. Um, people would get together, they'd dress up and put on their best. <laughs> Are they going to be doing that for this, too? We've seen a few hats, yeah. but it's not required. Okay, okay. <laughs> this is not a Downton Abbey affair, necessarily, but it is a really fun event where you can, you can come, you can get dressed up if you choose to. Uh, but it is a tea party, and we're going to have tea and punch for those who don't like tea, mm -hmm. but also all kinds of really delicious sweets and savories. It might be good for maybe moms and their daughters, too, to kind of go do this kind of thing. Absolutely. But I yeah. would think that, you know, if you... Oops, there goes my microphone. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> if, you enjoy, um, if you enjoy children's books, mm -hmm. if you like to be with family and friends, it's just really a wonderful way to spend two hours during mud season. Yeah, right. <laughs> Because there's not a we lot need something to do. To do. Yeah. Exactly. To learn more, I know you can go to the Bangor, uh, the Literacy Volunteers of Bangor webpage. Yes. Um, then you'll find out things about like the cost, that kind of thing. Yes. I mean, on our webpage at lvbangor.org, you go to events, and there's a, a, a page on there just for the literacy T. Uh, tickets are available in advance. They're not mm -hmm. available at the door. Uh, and they're $30. Okay, not bad for a fun event, too. It's a great fundraiser. And again, <laughs> it's going to support a wonderful mm. organization. I've had fun watching over the years, and, and I've talked to some of the people who have benefited from the programs you offer, and it's really changed their lives. Um, Literacy Volunteers, how many years? <laughs> We've been around yeah. since 50, and for 55 years. 55 years. Think of, think of the people who well, have benefited over those years. Thousands. Yeah. Thousands um, I, I assume, anything else you want to say? I assume you're always looking for volunteers or things like that. We are always looking for volunteers. Yeah. Volunteers. And so if you're interested in helping, um, the tutoring is the number one job description, number one opening we have is for tutors. Okay. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, Mary. And again, if you want more information on the T or about other volunteer opportunities, again, visit their website at Liter Literacy Volunteers of Bangor. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Let's send things back over to Devin for another look at our forecast. All righty, Craig, thank you very much. Happy Monday, a full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. Already a small cat advisory remains in effect today, expiring at 8 p.m. this evening, though, because of active surf that's being expected along the coast. So if you live near these areas, though, don't be surprised if you notice some active surf in those spots. Meanwhile, though, here's the wave heights right now at around 3 to 5 feet according to the buoys here. This is why a small kite advisory is in effect at this time with Agrisur being expected for their off roads east at this point as well. Meanwhile though we had a few raindrops last night early this morning even near the Bangor area that's tracked off to the north and east now. Seeing a few snow returns right now across the northern parts of the state and it's not just that spot seeing some of that snow as well. A good part of the northeast is seeing some, some snow shower action developing with an area low pressure that continues to track off towards the east. We'll start to see this taper off for us coming up later on tonight as well. Futurecast moving forward, though, showing that little bit of snow across the northern parts of the state throughout the morning period. We'll also have increasing clouds as well with a few sprinkles possible during the afternoon period, maybe a few flurries farther off towards the north where it will be a little bit cooler. But as we head towards uh, late tonight and parts of Tuesday, the precipitation taper is off. We hold on to the clouds, though. And as we head towards the Tuesday, thinking a partly cloudy sky, but going dry, though, as we do move forward in time. We'll have to wait until late Wednesday, though, for our next opportunity 
for a little bit of precipitation to move in, which will fall in the form of rain and snow, tracking up from the west going toward the east. Some rainfall on the coast where it might be just a little bit warmer there. Further off towards the north, some snowfall will be possible there as well. We'll track this through through parts of Thursday afternoon as well with a little bit of snow and wind. The once we push this through by Friday, we're looking pretty good as it tracks off towards the north and east, so we'll keep an eye on that system. But meanwhile, though, moving forward for today, here's what we're looking at here. Upper 40s, partly cloudy, some afternoon sprinkles possible, and that west wind gusting up to about 25 miles per hour at times. Later on tonight, we have upper 20s, the precipitation tapers off. We'll be under a partly cloudy sky with that west wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, here we go, middle 40s, partly cloudy and breezy. Northwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Already a Scott's Recreation extended forecast. So a few rain and snow chances for the day on Wednesday with highs in the low 40s. Upper 30s on Thursday with a chance for snow showers and mostly sunny on Friday. Highs in the upper 30s. There's some things that work better together. together. Like your workplace benefits and retirement savings. Voria helps you choose the right amounts without over or under investing. Across all your benefits and savings options, so you can feel confident in your financial choices. They really know how to put two and two together. Voya, well planned, well invested, well protected. You should Angie that. Angie what? Angie that. It means comparing custom quotes from skilled service professionals or booking at an upfront price so you can find the best price for you. Get started today at Angie.com. Welcome to 207 Wellness, where transformation begins from within. Embark on a journey of self-betterment with our comprehensive services from weight management to IV hydration, vitamin supplementation, and neurotoxin injections. 207 Wellness is here to support your wellness goals. Take the first step toward a healthier, happier you, rejuvenate your body, refresh your mind, and reclaim your vitality with 207 Wellness. Transform your wellness, transform your life. Give us a call today. Your piece of land demands the very best equipment. Kubota Equipment, the number one rated tractor brand for durability and owner experience with professional grade mowers, versatile sidekick utility vehicles and compact tractors that get it done right all backed by unmatched dealer support talk to your dealer today to schedule a demo available at doors equipment 1468 outer hammond street bangor it's the marvelous Mima. you tell lies you gamble and yet you never seem to pay a price for any of it when you're cute like me rules are just a little different young sheldon weekdays at four on fox 22 Dogs are a great stress reliever. That's according to a recent study that shows engaging with dogs or even watching playful videos of them can help with stress relief and concentration too. Researchers studied the brain waves and emotions of 30 people while they interacted with a poodle. Participants had to play, feed, massage, groom, photograph, hug, and walk the dog. Analysts found that playing and walking with the dog notably increased the state of people's stability and relaxation while the other activities like playing and grooming increased attention and concentration. Researchers say participants reported feeling significantly less depressed, stressed, and exhausted after their experiments. Give a dog a hug and make that stress just go away. All right, members of the Belfast Police Department jumped into icy ocean waters to show their support for Maine's Special Olympics. Officers spent the last several weeks raising money to help send athletes to the Special Olympic Games. Belfast Police Chief Robert Cormier says it's part of a decades-long tradition for police departments all around the country. Every March, all around the country, uh, police officers uh, jump into the cold water, wherever we can find it. The athletes in law enforcement have a really special bond that goes you know, back decades. Right. And uh, so today we had a lot of athletes out to cheer us on. Yeah, it's a really fun event. Chief Cormier invites members of the public to join them in next year's Polar Plunge. He says if you're interested, you can reach out to the Belfast Police Department to get involved. What a nice thing they did. All right, well, Maine's official state berry is now breaking records in the land down under. A single golf ball-sized blueberry now has a pie-in-the-sky piece of fame. 
the heaviest blueberry ever at 20.4 grams. It now owns a Guinness World Record. Costa Group Horticulturists grew it on the Costa Berry Farm in New South Wales, Australia. The berry took 12 months to grow. Horticulturist Brad Hawking says he knew it was looking great before the harvest, but not until he actually picked it did he know that it was special. The blueberry is 4.2 grams heavier than the previous record. Imagine getting that in your muffin. It'd be pretty neat. That's it for now, folks. We thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a great day. Today on 25 Words or Less, a man whose last name is as hard to spell as he is to walk.